This mini lesson defines return on capital and net profit margin. It also summarizes ways of improving net profits. By the way, it's assumed here that you understand the difference between fixed and variable costs. Look at the details of these three companies. Try and decide which company you think is doing best. Peter is the managing director of Peter's Gifts, an online gift company. His sales revenue is £2.5 million, his net profit is £1 million and his capital value is £10 million. Ron's company is Asteroid, which operates a chain of electrical retail shops. His sales revenue is £9 million, net profit is £1 million and capital value is £12 million. Marcia runs a company called Old Style, which retails antique reproduction furniture. Her sales revenue is £4 million, her net profit is £1 million, and her capital value is £15 million. Here are some pointers to think about. Net profit is sales revenue minus all costs, fixed and variable. Net profit margin is net profit expressed as a percentage of sales revenue. The formula for net profit margin then is net profit divided by sales revenue times 100. So if in company X net profit is £300,000, sales revenue is £1 million, so net profit margin would be 300,000 divided by 1 million times 100 equals 30%. Now, pause this video while you decide on your answer to the question. Be prepared to explain your answer. Here is the answer. One reason for calculating net profit margin is to compare the performance of a business with other businesses. You might think that all three companies are doing equally well, but that ignores the net profit margin. Peter's Gifts has a much higher net profit margin than the other two companies on a smaller sales revenue. The net profit margins for each business are as follows. Peter's Gifts, 40%, Asteroid, 11% and Old Style, 25%. Peter's higher net profit margin might be because he has lower cost than the others or it may be because he's able to set a higher price or it may be a combination of the two. Return on capital. A different way of measuring profit is to calculate net profit as a percentage of capital invested. This is called return on capital. As with net profit margin, business owners generally seek to increase return on capital. The formula is net profit divided by capital invested times 100. To illustrate return on capital, look again at the figures for Peter's gifts. Remember, net profit was a million pounds and capital is 10 million pounds. So using the formula, we can see that return on capital is 1 million divided by 10 million times 100 equals 10%. The money tied up in fixed assets is capital invested. When you're working out return on capital, do not muddle up fixed costs with fixed assets. Fixed costs, along with variable costs, are running costs, those involved in actual trading. Fixed assets are something different. Fixed assets may include things such as buildings, land, machinery and vehicles. To make a profit, capital, money, has to be tied up in this sort of asset rather than being used for other purposes. You have to buy those fixed assets. The starting point for assessing whether return on capital is acceptable or not is current bank interest rates. Bank interest is guaranteed, but profit from a business is not, so business owners will normally be looking for return on capital well above interest rates. To put it another way, just making a profit is not good enough. Businesses need to make a profit that represents an acceptable return. The more risk there is, the more investors will generally want a good return. Risk here refers to the likelihood that a business will not succeed. 
business is competitive after all. Your new product may generate very good levels of profit. Or consumers may prefer a product from a rival manufacturer, meaning your product is a complete loss-making flop. How can profits be increased? There are four ways in which a firm can increase its profits. One, increase sales without reducing net profit margin. Sales can be increased by improving existing products, launching new products, or more effective promotion, for instance. Two, increase net profit margin by reducing variable cost per unit. Be careful here. If your variable costs are reduced by simply using cheaper materials or components, this could reduce the quality of a product and its reputation. On the other hand, it may be possible to re reduce variable labour costs without affecting quality. One way of doing this is by increasing the level of automation used in production. 3. Increase net profit margin by reducing fixed costs. Fixed costs can be reduced by selling online instead of through physical shops. This could involve reducing fixed costs such as rent or management costs. 4. Increase net profit margin by increasing price. The less competition there is for a business, the more opportunity there is to increase price. But there is usually a danger that customers switch to other firms or products if you put your prices up. To sum up, net profit margin is net profit expressed as a percentage of sales revenue. One reason for calculating net profit margin is to compare the performance of a business with other businesses. Businesses need to make a profit that represents an acceptable return on capital. Return on capital is net profit as a percentage of capital invested. And there are four ways in which a firm can increase its profit. Increase sales without reduce, reducing net profit margin, by reducing variable costs, by reducing fixed costs, or by increasing price. Now have a go at these questions. Question one. Calculate the return on capital for asteroid and old style. See the figures above. Question 2. James runs a business that manufactures mountain bikes. He employs 100 people. His sales turnover last year was £10 million. His net profit last year was £10,000. His capital invested is £8 million. Discuss whether this is a successful business and how its profitability might be improved. To find out more, visit learnloads.com.